John here from RipeWave Audio, and for today's video, we're going to go over Pioneer's new flagship AV receiver, the VSX-LX805, that's coming to market this spring. Now, this announcement is coming just a few weeks after the other Onkyo brand, Integra, announced its flagship AV receiver. Now, we've yet to hear of Onkyo's version of this, but the Pioneer version is very much like the Integra version, minus a few things. So we're gonna go into those details in this video and see how they're different and how it compares with the rest of the Pioneer range that was announced nearly two years ago. This model replaces a couple of models that Pioneer has since discontinued. The SCLX704, which was $1,599 in 2019, and the SCLX904, which sold for $3,299 the same year. And these discontinued products are the ones that are closest to this new flagship. And I would say the LX904, even though its number is 100 higher, uh, is closest to what the 805 is now coming with. Uh, here it is pictured. And you'll find here when we do our comparison that this design is not too much different than the new design. These were 9 and 11 channel uh, models respectively. The 9 channel uh, 704 was at 135 watts per channel. And the 11 channel 904 was 140 watts per channel. Now these we believe were both D3 class amplifiers that were within these discontinued models. Now, before we get into the new model, I want to review some of the history that's happened since 2019. And we did this on the Integra video, so you can skip ahead if you've already seen that. But Box International now owns the Pioneer, Onkyo, and Integra brands as part of its portfolio. Now, how did we get to this point? Well, Originally, Sound United was going to acquire these brands, and this was announced back in May of 2019, soon after these original uh, flagships were made available. And uh, that fell through. And the next thing that we learned was in October of 2020 that there would be a new distribution for these brands. Uh, the 11 Trading Company would... Uh, would also distribute the Onkyo Integra and Pioneer brands along with the Clips uh, group that it already uh, manages. Then in 2020, a new range of AV receivers with AK capability were announced uh, that would be available, but not include their flagship models nor an AV processor separate. Soon afterwards, we learned that Vox International Corporation was going to acquire the business from Onkyo. And this was May of 21. Then of September of that year, we learned that Premium Audio Company, a wholly owned division of Vox International, would actually complete the deal and that Sharp Electronics would handle the manufacturing. Then we learned in July of 22 that they would fill in the distribution hole in Europe, Middle East, and Africa with Premium Audio Company handling that distribution. So now this brings us to 2023 in March, and we're learning that Pioneer has finally filled in their flagship AV receiver, just as they've done with their Integra brand. And this comes to us as the VSX LX805, now, this will be an 8K unit, just like the other models introduced in 2021, and it will sell for $2,999. It will offer 13 channels of processing. This will be powered by 11 amplifiers at 150 watts each. This will be class AB and not D3 powered. And this is the same move that Integra did. So they're moving from their D3 power to class AB power on these new receivers that are their flagships. Now, taking a look at the front of this unit, it doesn't look really any different than the prior model. 
Uh, we got a glimpse of what the remote will look like from the manual, but we haven't seen an individual picture of it, but it looks very much like the same remote that was in the previous generation. Along the back, we do see the introduction of balanced input and output, uh, but a little different than what we had in the Integra brand, and we'll talk about that in a bit. The door does still open in the front, exposing of uh, the headphone jack and what duplicates a lot of the remote functionality on the front, as well as inputs for USB and HDMI right on the front. Now, in comparing side by side with the discontinued models, again, here you can clearly see that there is no difference cosmetically between these two models. And you can see the actual remote that was in the 704 and 904 and how the new one probably matches up with that. Uh, and that's what it will look like in color, we would imagine. And here they are with the doors open. And again, the placement of these buttons and uh, front panel accessible uh, HDMI and USB are in the same places. Turning around to the back, you can see some clear differences between the new model and the previous flagships with the introduction of the balance connections for an input and for the front left and right channels. So that's nice to see on this uh, new model. We also see some extra binding posts. Now they're both the old version and the new version. Uh, both had 11 channels of amplification. I'm talking about the 904 versus the 805. But the extra set of binding posts uh, gives you some more flexibility, but doesn't give you more channels of amplification. Now, comparing it against the Integra flagship, the DRX 8.4, uh, there's always been a difference between Pioneer and Integra as far as the front cosmetics. But generally speaking, the same types of buttons are available, but the Integra is not hidden, be, uh, doesn't hide a lot of those buttons behind a door. And turning around to the back, now the Integra is mostly white on the back, the Pioneer is mostly black on the back. You see generally the same layout of uh, the inputs and the outputs on this, but with some differences on channel counts on the balance connections. And then I'm particularly talking about the pre-outs. So the Integra, it didn't just have a front left and right, but also a center balanced output and two subwoofer balanced outputs. And you don't see that on the Pioneer. And there's some other subtle differences which we'll get into when we get into the I.O. comparison, but that's the most glaring one that you'll see comparing the Integra with the Pioneer flagships. Now looking at the Pioneer range entirely now, combining what was introduced in 2021 with this new flagship, we can see how it fills out and rounds out the, the line here. Of course, a big jump from the previous top-of-the-line model, the VSX LX505, which sells for $1,699, up $200 since we first looked at this two years ago. That's uh, a big jump in cost from the 505 up to the 804, and almost double the cost to go to the 804 to give you up to 150 watts per channel versus 120 and those two other channels of amplification. The other thing you get is dual independent subwoofer outputs, which you don't have and what was previously introduced in 2021. They were all run in parallel, those subwoofer outputs. And there's some other differences about the subwoofer, which we'll get into in a bit here. But here you can see the whole line, the family kind of sits together, you know, a very consistent look through them. You can see that on the top row, and you can see the discontinued models on the bottom row that don't look much different. And here's just a quick view of the Integra line here that we showed in the last uh, video that we did on Integra. Looking inside the Pioneer, we can see the SC LX904, the interior of that from 2019, and the new 2023 model and how much different that looks. It's a complete redesign from, from what we can see here. Uh, it does look exactly like what the Integra introduced uh, a few weeks ago. 
So only thing that's different, instead of saying Integra on the power supply, it says Elite. So that is to be expected. But we can assume that this is pretty much the same components inside. Now let's look at the details, of course, starting with the speaker layouts and sound formats. And we'll do this side by side with Integra uh, for comparison's sake. And we can see the LX805 here. And we can see that it supports a 7.2.4 configuration. This can also be run with four subwoofers for a 7.4.4 configuration, but keep in mind those additional subwoofers are run in parallel with the primary subwoofer in each group. So you'll, the plan is to have two subwoofers at the front of the room running at the same configuration, and then two subwoofers at the back of the room having its own independent signal, but not four independent subwoofer configuration. What we really like about the new flagship is it introduced Oral 3D. Now that wasn't present on any of the models that were introduced in 2021, but do exist now on the flagship. No word that Oral 3D is going to be added to those previous models. But all the models do support Dolby Atmos and DTS-X. None of them support DTS-X Pro. And of course, looking through the, the range here, the 805 differs from the 904 in the number of amplifiers, so those rear surround speakers would not be powered by the 904. That you'd have to use external amplification for, but now with the new 805, everything can be powered for a 7.2.4 configuration with what's built into the 805. Jumping down to the 505, it's also a 7.2.4 configuration, but now your subwoofer two channels are run in parallel, so it's really a dot one. And uh, like the 904, those rear uh, channels are not powered because this is a nine channel amplification in the 505, as well as in the 305, which comes in at 20 watts less at 100 watts per channel versus 120. And you have some more choices to make because you can't, uh, you'll have to determine whether you're going to power your uh, rear surrounds uh, or your second row of height channels with those amplifiers. And when it comes to the 805, you have some more choices because there's only 10, 10 channels of processing. You have to make a choice between a 5.2.4 configuration or a 7.2.2 configuration. With the 105, your choices are even more limited because you're down to eight channels of processing. That brings you to a 5.2.2 or a 7.2.0 configuration. And you can see here the like models from Integra on the right, you can either pause here or go through that other video from a couple of weeks ago for those details. Now we like about all these models, they have a quarter inch headphone jacks, of course, with the Pioneer that's hidden behind that little door in most cases. They all have an AM FM tuner. They all have a removable IEC power supply. And as far as the uh, Power input, that has to be determined with what you buy at the factory. It's either going to be a 110 or a 220 volt unit. Uh, it's not selectable at your house. They all support IMAX Enhance and Dolby Vision, which is nice to see. The 805 is supporting Dirac Live, as did the 505 and 305 that were introduced in 2021. The discontinued model and the 105 just support the Pioneer room calibration system, which is still an option for the other models. What's been introduced with the 805 is the ability to add bass control for single or multi-sub for Dirac at $349 for single and $499 for multi-sub. That option doesn't appear to be available yet for the 505 or 305 that also support Dirac. So unlike the Integra, the Pioneer brands do not have THX Select certification. And um, I'm wondering why it doesn't. These appear to be exactly the same units. I think it's just they didn't go through the extra exercise of getting them certified. I think you're getting the same benefit. So whether it has the THX label or not, 
I think you're getting the same level of performance, but I don't know that for sure. Now in the Integra video, we talked about Clips Optimize Mode as being part of the same um, Vox International family of, of products. Uh, with Clips, they had this unique opportunity to do some optimization for Clips speakers, and this is supposed to be for their reference and reference premiere speaker lines. And what it does is it has built-in crossover settings which are optimized for those speakers. And this shows up in the Integra and Onkyo products as speaker combo in the manual. The thing is, I can't see this option available for Pioneer. They're not talking about this on the Pioneer website, and it's not showing up in the manual. So it appears that the Clips Optimize mode or speaker combo is not available for the Pioneer products. Perhaps it's something they'll add in the future, but again, it seems like the Pioneer models always have a little something less than either the Integra or Onkyo brands. Now looking at the DAX, the 805 has an ES9026 uh, Pro DAC chip, just as the DRX 8.4 does with the Integra flagship. So the ratings on those chips are the same, and this results in the same uh, output for the overall unit, 107 dB signal to noise, 0.08% total harmonic distortion, gives you PCM signals at 24192, and what we like to see continued support for DSD at DSD 256. And the lower models are not much different, uh, only a dB less on the signal to noise. Otherwise, it's giving you the same output spec, but we don't know the uh, DAC chip that is inside the models released in 2021. Now let's look at the I.O. The flagship models give you six uh, HDMI in, three out. The other models give you six in, two out. Not much of a difference. The uh, digital inputs are two coaxial in, three optical out on the flagship versus uh, one and one on the other models. As we mentioned before, on the balance outputs, you're only given a front, left, and right channel balanced output, uh, whereas in the Integra model, you're given 3.2 on the output. So you've got the front three plus the two subwoofer balanced outputs. So much better on the Integra there. For the unbalanced connections, it's an 11.4 output, as we mentioned before. That four is really essentially two pairs of subwoofer outputs. They're running in parallel with a second output uh, to give you four, but they're not four discrete subwoofer outputs. And that's what that footnote there is for. It has a balanced input, as mentioned before, plus four unbalanced inputs, which is down two, which is in the 904, as well as the 505. So you lose a couple of analog inputs with this flagship. There are two zone outputs, still two composite and one component output, which is down one component output uh, from the old flagship, but it still has a moving magnet phono input. Just a quick review of the real highlighted features here, you know, getting that balanced input number one, getting a front balanced outputs for the left and right speakers, and getting those subwoofer pairs that out gives you effectively four subwoofer outputs, even though they're two independent. But comparing it against the Integra, the Integra gives you those extra outputs for balance. It gives you the center plus two subwoofer balanced. So that's a big difference. And the Integra gives you this uh, fourth feature, which is for the zone outputs, it's giving you a subwoofer uh, feed there as well. And this is very unique in the marketplace where the zones have a really a 2.1 output. So this is nice to see on the Integra, but it's not on the Pioneer. Now looking at the video in more detail, uh, all of the inputs of the 805 are 8K capable for HDMI, and it's giving you two 8K outputs, one of them being uh, eARC, it's 4K 120, 8K 60. Uh, it gives you VRR, QFT, auto low latency mode, and DSC. 
Uh, QMS is not listed, just as it's not listed for the Integra DRX 8.4, so I don't know what's going on there, because they do list it for the 505 and the 305 and the other Integra models, but not on the flagship, which is odd. Now, the 105 being the entry-level model doesn't list it either. Uh, the entry-level model does not list IMAX Enhance as well. On the networking, these all have a 10100 Ethernet port, supports wireless A, B, G, N, and A, C. The Bluetooth in is 4.2 SBC or AAC. On the output to headphones or speakers, you have the option of SBC or Aptics or Aptics HD, which is nice to see, which we didn't have that output to Bluetooth on the prior flagship from 2019. As far as control, all these Pioneer and Integra models support the same. You know, Alexa, Google, and Josh I.O. support. It supports protocol through Ethernet, uh, infrared, uh, RS-232 signals. It has two in, one out on the IR. And the integration with Control 4, although it does not list Crestron with the Pioneer models as it does with Integra. For streaming ecosystems, AirPlay 2, Chromecast, Sonos, Rune is coming with an update to the new flagship, but it's already present in all the other models. Spotify Connect, DTS PlayFi, um, and it doesn't appear that they're talking about Flare Connect anymore. This was something we saw previously pushed by the Pioneer, Onkyo, and Integra brands. Uh, seemed like they were trying to build up their own ecosystem of speakers, etc., but that did not materialize in any big way. Internet streaming, uh, Amazon Prime, Apple Music via the AirPlay, Deezer, Pandora, Spotify, Tidal, and Tuned In. And now we're on to the remotes, and we can see here how the uh, 805 matches the remote of the 904, and of course it's very similar to the Integra flagship as well. And all the other models use another remote style, which is a little smaller. The similarities between Pioneer and Integra continue. Looking at the uh, dimensions, uh, really not much change in the dimensions over the prior models, although this new model is a little deeper at 18.3 inches, 468 millimeters. Now the 805 comes in at seven pounds more than the discontinued flagship at 47.4 pounds, 21.5 kilograms, although this is a little lighter than the Tegra equivalent. So where is Integra getting those extra two pounds if they look very similar inside? Is it by the chassis bracing, etc.? That would be interesting to know where it picks up those additional two pounds because it has the same output specifications on these products. In fact, the power consumption is even the same at 1,095 pounds at 0.1 watt in standby. Now, all these units are made in Malaysia and carry a three-year warranty. Here's a little look of what Pioneer gives you for an on-screen display, uh, very much like what's on the Integra. Uh, here's what uh, the direct calibration looks like. Uh, no surprises there. There is a remote app for the Pioneer. Uh, it doesn't appear to have a Control Pro app as with Integra, so we'll wait and see if Pioneer also has an app that's a little upgraded like Integra is offering. And that sums it up for Pioneer. And as I say, you get a little bit less with the Pioneer flagship than you do with the Integra uh, flagship. Uh, with that said, you know, what, what brand do you feel is uh, the best for you? Now you do pay a little less for the Pioneer. Would you rather pay less for the Pioneer or pay a little bit more for the Integra to get those extra features? That feedback would be useful to the Ripe Wave audio community. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you want to take your membership to the next level, go to www.patreon.com slash ripewave. Or you can hit that thanks button for a one-time donation to help this channel along. That would be very appreciated. And of course, regardless, you can hit the bell icon so you'll be notified when the next video is posted. Until then, 
keep evolving your audio experience.